Today I am going to uh, relay an event that, that happened to me many years ago, and I wanted to give a very personal perspective to help people in this place and outside understand one element of sexual violence against women. When I was 14, I was raped. As is common, it was by somebody who was known to me. He had offered to walk me home from a youth event, and in those days, everybody walked everywhere. It was quite common to do that. It was early evening. It wasn't dark. I was wearing, I'm imagining, I'm guessing, jeans and a sweatshirt. I knew my way around where I lived. Uh, I, was, I was very comfortable, and we did go a slightly different way, but I didn't think anything of it. He asked me, uh, he told me he wanted to show me something in a wooded area, and at that point, I must admit, I was alarmed. I did have a warning bell, but I overrode that warning bell because I knew him, and therefore there was a level of trust in place. And to be honest, looking back at that point, I don't think I knew what rape was. It was not something that was talked about. My mother never talked to me about it. I didn't hear other girls or other women talking about it. It was mercifully quick, and I remember, first of all, feeling surprise, then fear, then horror, as I realised I quite simply couldn't escape. Because obviously he was stronger than me. And there was no sense, even initially, of any sexual desire from him, which I suppose looking back again I find odd. My senses were absolutely numbed, and thinking about it now, 37 years later, I remember, I cannot remember hearing anything when I replay it in my mind. Now, as somebody who's an ex-professional musician, who is very, very auditory, I find that quite telling. I now understand that your subconscious brain, not your conscious brain, makes a decision on your behalf as to how you should respond, whether you take flight, whether you fight, or whether you freeze. And I froze, I must be honest. Afterwards, I walked home alone. I was crying, I was cold, and I was shivering, and I now realise, of course, that was a, the shock response. I didn't tell my mother, I didn't tell my father, I didn't tell my friends, and I didn't tell the police. I bottled it all up inside me. I hoped briefly and appallingly that I might be pregnant so that that would force a situation to help me control it. And of course, without support, the capacity and resources I had within me to process it were very limited. I was very ashamed. I was ashamed that I had allowed this to happen to me. And I had a whole range of internal conversations about, I should have known. Why did I go that way? Why did I walk home with him? Why wasn't, didn't I understand the danger? I deserved it because I was too this, I was too that. <coughs> I felt that I was spoiled and impure. And I really felt revulsion towards myself. I, of course, then detached from the child up to the I had been. And although, in reality, at the age of 14, that was probably the start of my sexual awakening, at that time, remembering back, sex was something that men did to women, and perhaps this incident reinforced that early belief. I briefly sought favour elsewhere, and I now understand that even a brief period of hypersexuality is about trying to make sense of an incident and reframe the most intimate of acts. My oldest friends, with whom I'm still friends, must have sensed a change in me, but because I never told them, they didn't know of the cause. And I allowed myself to drift away from them for quite a few years, and indeed, I found myself taking time off school and staying at home on my own, listening to music and reading and so on. I did have a boyfriend in later years of school, and he was very supportive when I told him about it, but I couldn't make sense of my response, and it is my response that gives weight to the event. I carried that guilt, anger, fear, sadness and bitterness for years. And when I got married 12 years later, I felt I had a duty to tell my husband I wanted him to understand why there was this swaddled kernel of extreme emotion at the very heart of me that I knew he could sense. But for many years, I simply could not say the words without crying. I could not say the words. And it was only in my mid-40s I took some steps to go and, and get help with it. 
So it had a huge effect on me, and it fundamentally and fatally undermined my self-esteem, my confidence, and my sense of self-worth. Despite this, I am, I am blessed in my life. I've been happily married for, for 25 years. But if this was the effect from one small, albeit significant, event in my life stage, how must it be for these women who are carrying this on a day-by-day -day basis? And I thought carefully, should I speak about this today? And that almost intake of breath, what? you are going to go and talk about this was exactly the reason that motivated me, motivated me to do it, because there is still a taboo about sharing this kind of information. And certainly for people of my generation, it is truly shocking to be talking in, in public about this sort of thing. And as somebody uh, remarked earlier, rape doesn't just affect the woman, it affects the family as well. And before m my mother died early of cancer, I really wanted to tell her, but I couldn't bring myself to. I have a daughter, and if something happened to my daughter and she couldn't share it with me, I would be appalled. And so it was past possibly cowardly, but it was an act of love that I made that I protected my, my mother. As an adult, of course I now know rape's not about sex at all. It's all about power and control, and it is a crime of violence. And I still pick up on where the myths of rape are perpetuated from a male perspective. Surely you could have fought him off. Did you scream loudly enough? And the idea that some men would suggest that a woman's giving subtle hints or is making it up is outrageous. These assumptions put the woman at the heart of cause when she should be at the heart of effect. A rape happens when a man makes a decision to hurt someone he feels he can control. Rapes happen because of the rapist, not because of the victim. And we women and our society have to stand up for each other. We have to be courageous. We have to call things out and see where things are wrong. We have to support and nurture our sisters as we do with our sons. Like many women of my age, I have on occasion encountered other aggressive actions towards me, both in business and, in fact, in, in politics. But one thing I realise now is that I'm not scared, and he was. I'm not scared. I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank the Honourable Lady for what she has said and the way in which she said it, which has left an indelible impression upon us all.